Hello, my name is Jack Dolls, Director of Training at Tulsa Welding School in Jacksonville, Florida. And today we're going to talk to you about the four major reasons why people have wells that fail and what the defects are. First, I'm going to talk to you about arc strikes. Okay, arc strikes are definitely by far one of the number one reasons why people have cracks in their welds and why their welds fail uh, throughout the process. So, what is an arc strike? How does this occur? So basically what it is where you take a 7018, whatever your electrode is, and it's when you touch the metal you know, and then you move it away, you drag it across the metal, lots of variations here, tapping it. What all these things, every time the rod hits the metal and it strikes, that's considered an arc strike. And every time you have one of those arc strikes, there's going to be little crater cracks in there. So that's why it's critical that you strike behind the area or strike up ahead of the area where you want to weld. You come back and you burn back through that area. So if you're going to strike up here, you come back, make your tie in and then burn back through that area where you had an arc strike. You can see it a lot of times on pipes. You know, a lot of people arc strike out on pipe. Uh, and like I said, those would cause cracks. So you got to really pay attention to those. I'd say that's probably one of the number one reasons why people get cracks is because of uh, the arc strikes. So you got to pay attention to those. Another reason, porosity. I hope you can see it along here, but I've got porosity all in this weld right here. Okay. And then I also got some more porosity over here to just to show you the variations of porosity that you can get. Let's talk about uh, porosity. You know, some people may not even know what porosity is or how, what it looks like. So I want to just get, try to get a close up picture here and show you what porosity looks like. Porosity basically is holes in your weld. Okay. There is, it can be in many shapes and sizes. Uh, they can be from very small diameters to very big diameters. I have multiples here. So in here, if you look very closely, you can see little tiny dots all in here. This is what happens when you run flux core with no shielding gas. Uh, you know, you end up with a very ugly weld and this is just littered with porosity, holes all in the weld. If you go and grind this down, you'll see, but just holes everywhere. And then here's a big hole, you know, like this is on a bigger scale of porosity. You can see right here, there's a giant hole of porosity here. And like I say, if you were to grind in here and kind of open that up a little more, it's going to look like a honeycomb full of holes and just nastiness. And honestly, this will never pass. It will fail immediately uh, like I say because there's it's nothing in there it's just filled with holes uh, and so that's porosity and like I say that's bad stuff prevention is the key okay and then let's talk about the slag you know welding over your slag I have a little one right here I'm knocking a little bit of the slag off so where you can see the weld and then see the slag left on and you cannot you know, some people think you can just weld over your slag. Well, sometimes maybe so, but I would say most of the time, probably not. You know, and so what you need to do is you need to basically, you need to knock this slag off before you take the weld. Here, I'll knock a little bit off just so you can see how easy it is. You literally just can take it and see how easy that comes off. I mean, we literally just tapped on it and the slag just falls off. Now, like I say, that literally took just, what, three, four seconds to get the slag off? Please take just the extra time there and make sure you knock all your slag off before you start running your next pass. Uh, like I say, you don't want to try to weld over your slag. You're going to end up with slag inclusions, and ultimately you're going to end up with failed welds. And uh, like I say, that's not good. Another one is tungsten inclusion. So I actually tried to get my tungsten to stick to the plate, but it wasn't working. So I stuck it here, and what happens a lot of time with the TIG process is you stuck your tungsten, your TIG welding along, you touch it with your filler wire, maybe you push it into the pipe, the plate, the weld, whatever it is, and then you break it off. Well, there's tungsten inclusion in there. I guarantee you there's tungsten inclusion in there. If that tungsten is messed up, then there's probably tungsten in your weld. And if you do not grind it out physically, take your time and grind it out of there, that tungsten will stay in that weld. And whenever you go to do an x-ray, you go to do a bin test, that tungsten is going to be in that weld. You're not going to burn it out. Okay, it's not going to happen. It's going to be in there. So the only way to get it out is to stop and grind it. So every time you stick your tungsten, every single time you stick your tungsten, stop and grind it out. And there's one more I'd like to talk about, but I didn't, I couldn't really show it on here. And that is a lack of fusion, you know, where you have lack of fusion and that's either where you've, you're, 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 you don't run hot enough, or maybe, um, you just didn't run it at the right angles or positions and you didn't get burned in there. Lack of fusion is another one where it can cause you to fail your welds. Uh, so you got to really avoid that too. I couldn't quite show you on this plate, but it's another, another one uh, that you need to watch out for. Uh, like I said, and that's lack of fusion and it can happen on multiple processes. Any process can have lack of fusion. So make sure that you're running the right amperage and the right bolts 
uh, whatever process it is, so you don't have lack of fusion. So let's just go back and cover it one more time just to make sure. So right over here, we have arc strikes, and that is where the rod has hit the plate, and you've struck it, you drag it, and you moved it all around, whatever the case may be, but these are called arc strikes. They always lead to crater cracking, always, okay? So you gotta avoid the, the arc strikes all over the place. Like I say, you can't have arc strikes all over your pipe and plate. They just, they can't happen. Then, like I say, we got porosity here. Porosity with just eight up with little tiny holes, and we got one over here with giant big holes. Just wanna show you the variations of porosity. Like I say, it's all bad. Uh, like I say, it's, it's cancer. You gotta get rid of it. Then down here, once again, we've got slag still left on our weld, okay? And all this really takes just a few moments of your time just to clean all the slag off so you don't have, you know, uh, trap slag as you're welding over the top of it. And then this last one over here is a tungsten inclusion. Like I say, I actually went ahead and stuck my tungsten to the plate and then I broke it off just so where I could leave actually a piece of tungsten that's right here, if you can see it, is still stuck on the metal. And like I say, if we don't take our extra time and grind it and clean this off of here, uh, as we weld over the top of it, there's just gonna be a tungsten inclusion and you're gonna end up failing due to tungsten inclusion. So these are some of the ones that you gotta watch out for. So please pay attention as you're out there welding and working and uh, take time in your welds and the few minutes it takes to clean and prepare it and uh, you will have successful welds. Thank you for watching. Hey everyone, thanks for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something today. And if you wanna stay up to date, and get tips and tricks to become a better welder, then subscribe to our channel. And if you would like to learn even more right now, click on our video. Thank you and we'll see you next time.